First step in using the simple sat program is to select the satellite. Go to the satellites item on the menu bar, click it, and the satellites menu shows. The satellite information for all the satellite data that's been downloaded from the internet or satellites that have been added using a manual procedure I'll show you in a second are contained here. The selected satellites organizes your satellites into groups. There's four groups. You can switch between groups by simply clicking on the radio button by the group name. Once you have selected a group, you can click on the predict item in the menu bar and the satellites for the currently selected group will be shown with the usual values for wait till AOS, sometimes called countdown, AOS, and so on. You can sort by any of these uh, columns by clicking on the column header. So if you want to sort by path length, you can click on it. And it's sorted in ascending order. Click on it again. It'll be sorted in descending order. You can select a satellite in one of two ways. One is you can simply select it from the satellite menu. So if we wanted to switch over to AO27, we could just click on it here and we're now looking at AO27. If we are in the predict window and we want to select a satellite, we can just select it from the entry in the predict window. Uh, you can have as many satellites in a group as you want. Um, I'm not saying I necessarily recommend doing that, but um, it is possible. So if we click on VO52, we've now switched over to satellite VO52. You may have noticed the configuration of the radios change as we change satellites. Some satellites um, have more than one entry for radio configurations. You can select the one that you want by pressing the cat select button. And here for VO52, we can see I've got two entries put in here, one for the linear transponder and one for the beacon. If you want to switch to a different configuration, you can just click on that line in the uh, cat select menu. You can also edit these very easily. If you just click on the cat edit button, um, first thing you notice is the column header is changed to red, which is a reminder that you're in the edit mode. And you can go in and, and change any of these as you see fit. You can also add more lines. There's a blank, there will always be a blank line at the bottom here. So you can just enter in uh, new values as you see fit. The, go back to the satellites menu here and we'll pick another satellite. We'll pick AO51 and there's a couple of additional items on the display menu. Uh, these are sort of carryovers from another project I was working on uh, and that is there's two ways of displaying the map information using a polar projection. The first uses the old school Oscar locator, which shows our QTH and the satellite location and the track. Uh, the other was a really interesting map that someone, a ham, had found at a some sort of flea market in Russia. Apparently it was used on ships to help them locate some sort of a satellite. Uh, it's a nice map because it looks cool and it also covers the whole Earth. So there's our QTH in and there's the location of the satellite and the track. Uh, adding a satellite, just click on the Add button, copy and paste the three line satellite data into the box. The first line is the satellite name. 
and you can call it whatever you want. We'll call this one CO1 and click on the save button and we can see it was added to the list. If we want to delete we can pick the one or more that we want to delete from this menu. If we want to delete that CO1, we click on it, click delete. It will be deleted from the all satellites menu and any group that it may have been a part of. If we, we can turn off the satellite display, go back to our standard map, and I think that's about it. So I'll say, hope that maybe you found some ideas that you might want to use in a satellite tracking or station control program. 73s.